Now, my guest today, Buba Galadima, is seen by many as a real trooper, tremendously loyal to his country, determined to play a full patriotic role in Nigerian politics. Nothing, apparently, would deter him from that, not even being arrested and detained nearly 40 times over the years. He once said that no politician has suffered the calamities he's been through in Nigeria. One of those calamities appears to have been losing his closeness to the Nigerian president, Muhammadu Buhari. He was, after all, the national campaign secretary of the Buhari organization, and is said to have been one of the signatories to the merger agreement between the political parties that came together to form the All Progressives Congress, or APC, the platform that delivered Asso Rock to President Buhari. But soon after, Mr. Galadima did an about-face in what some suggest was an impetuous decision, saying that Mr. Buhari was not worthy of being president, and switching sides to join Mr. Buhari's political opponent, Atiku Abubakar. So, what next? And where next for the man who insists he's one of the few politicians unafraid to discuss the real concerns of the Nigerian people? And I'm suitably pleased to say that Buba Galadima joins me now in the studio. You were looking at me a bit apprehensively <laughs> there, thinking, <laughs> surely that's not me he's talking about. <laughs> but thank you very much indeed for joining us. I mean, you, you've been arrested dozens of times from your own um, profile that we've read, dozens of times in Nigeria. You've run up against not just security services, but against many politicians and parties. Um, what's your status now? Do you feel free? How free do you feel? Well, uh, Charles, thank you for uh, yet giving me another opportunity to educate Nigerians on the little that I know because uh, time is tickling against the people like us because of age. Therefore, it is important that young men and women get the maximum out of us before we pass away. This must always linger in the minds of patriotic people all over the world, or great people all over uh, the world. I am still Buba Galadima, and uh, I have never changed one bit. I will still speak the facts and the truth as they are to whosoever crosses my way and uh, I hope that that would ginger uh, young people uh, to emulate me if they so believe in patriotism and, uh, and, uh, and uh, some perseverance because most young men today would want to cut corners to get to where they ought to get in the next 50 years today, uh, which is not possible. I had been in this game for quite some time. I am still one of the poorest of the poor, but a friend of the top and the low. Yes, and I, I think you made a crucial point there when you talked about perseverance, because that is a virtue that is becoming short in supply in Nigeria here because I mean most people as you said they want to do things very quickly in fact most people don't even have the patience uh, to go through school for example they just think well it's a waste of time I need to get out and do things that are important so that's a crucial uh, point and we'll get to a bit more to talk about Nigeria and how all these those things sort of manifest themselves but we talked about the fact that you wrote on the internet, your Wikipedia page, of all these arrests that you've been through, all this change from one party to another, all these, if you like, shifting political loyalties. Have they done you more good than harm or more harm than good? Charles, that is, a, that is an erroneous conclusion of where I find myself at every point in time. That is always when you dig in. It's out of principles rather than out of greed to, to get to softer grounds. 
No, it is always principles that propel me to leave one stage to the other. And let me give an example. I am not personally a supporter of former Vice President Atiku Abu Bakr. And I wanted the world to know that. Of course, even people dare call me, please, can you send some money out of what Atiku has given you? <laughs> even and though you were his spokesman for a while. Yes. We broke away from the APC. And I headed the breakaway as the national chairman of the reformed APC. Mm. And we entered into a memorandum of understanding with the PDP because we felt at that time and now that the APC and its government was the worst thing that had ever happened to Nigeria. And I had a candidate that I promoted and I could still, given the opportunity, promote that candidate for some simple, good, short reasons. What are those reasons? There is no living Nigerian politician today that has performed in public office as the candidate I had promoted. There is no living politician in Nigeria today that you can pinpoint to his achievements and his first footprints where he held sway in public office. There is no Nigerian today, that candidate, if given the opportunity, and he had that opportunity in a smaller scale, that has promoted education to its highest level while in government, and even when out of government, that candidate is still sponsoring people from the fortunes of life that he has got. Because no country can develop without education. And there is no candidate, as I speak to you again in this country, don't ask me for the name, because that's what you are <laughs> I'm trying, trying to, to do. I'm to ask you for the name, but I can well <laughs> guess who you're talking about. No candidate, no politician in Nigeria that has got his own type of vision for Nigeria's tomorrow and has got empathy for the downtrodden. And wherever any Nigerians, Nigerians' right is trampled upon, you find that person there trying to settle matters. So I have no apology. But when he lost at the primaries, mm. as a man of honor, somebody prevailed. I had to support him to the last and you know that I supported Vice President Atiku Abu Bakr to the last, to the last, the only man that supported him to the last because we have a covenant. And I persuaded other candidates that he won primaries and that was transparent thanks to the PDP then. When and I want to, the PDP then, 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 you mean I will the, explain the, if okay. you want to accept. Right, go then, ahead. Since he, uh, he, he, he merged transparently, all of us have a duty, a duty to rally behind him and support him to the end. And that I did. And I have no regrets. And given the opportunity with another candidate, irrespective of who, because in politics, you can support anybody, the electorates, or the delegates may decide otherwise. Mm. And if you believe that had you prevailed, you want them to support you, then you are under obligation to support that candidate. But that let, was my position. Right. Okay. Let, let, let me ask you this. What is it? Because, I mean, listening to youth talk, there, there's so much energy and enthusiasm and light in your eyes when you talk about the nuances of Nigerian politics. What is it about this country's politics that keeps you coming back for more, in spite of what you clearly say are, you know, occasions when the principles that you stand for have not necessarily been observed by the other people that you're working with and arguably sometimes the betrayal as well the answer is simple we have not yet reached the eldorado 
I have not yet seen the Nigeria of my dream. Hmm. One people, one destiny. I would want to recall our days in the MPN. We must be a people of one destiny, one nation, under God, tagging together, looking and, and supporting each other in, under any circumstance, and we must unite as brothers and sisters to be the same flock. I had not yet seen that. That is why I decided that even not actively holding public office or political office, I must always, if I have breath remaining in my system, contribute my quota to that unity of one country called Nigeria. And do you think that as a result of, of all of that, you, you are destined to remain the political outsider all the time? Because all, all the people who you, you have to work with politically will always see you as someone who is totally uncompromising. And the politics is about compromise, isn't it? We will come back to compromise because there are likely, likely questions you would ask that would have to get me to address the issue of compromise. Mm. But let me say something. In the olden days, during gone prophets, because of one man, one good man, God saved the world, severally. Because of one person, pious person, good person, God can save a whole tribe can save a whole clan. And if I am the only oasis in the desert that could look at authorities into the face and would look at human beings who are occupying transient position and tell them to their face that you are wrong, that you needn't to do this way, you ought to have looked this other way, then I am a fulfilled person. That is why I have no money I'm just coming from the farm. Just took bath quickly to come and meet you. That okay. is where I make ends meet. Okay, let me and ask you to... Let me, let me I, ask you I, to need to, I need to learn. Okay, just I pause to, for a minute, please, because we must take a break. I apologize for that. But we will come back and you'll continue from there. Uh, Buba Galadima, you're watching The Arise interview. Plenty more still ahead as we continue our chat with a prominent Nigerian politician, Buba Galadima. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Arise interview. I'm Charles Anyagul, and my guest today is Buba Galadima. He's a farmer and popular Nigerian politician who's been in virtually all the main political parties in Nigeria and has been close, personally or professionally, to all the top political players in the last few decades, from military rulers to civilian presidents. Through it all, and perhaps much more so recently, He's been a tireless campaigner for good governance in Nigeria and is well known for his direct style and even more direct politics. He speaks constantly about the implications of the rising anger and alienation amongst ordinary Nigerians who, he says, feel neglected and ignored by the system, something that makes them prime targets for militants intent on recruiting more followers and radicalizing them. And the politician and farmer, that's how he likes to be introduced, Buba Galadima, is still with me in the studio. Thank you very much indeed for staying with us. And uh, just to let you complete your thoughts earlier in the day, you were saying that you don't have any money, that you've just come from the farm. Pick it up from there. That's where I want to make a living, going to the farm. Because without that, I may die of hunger. Because you rich people. I'm not rich, I promise you. Looking fine like this, like uh, you are coming from the extra, extra level. No, 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 no. We're not talking about me. We're talking about you. <laughs> so let's turn the focus so, on you. All I'm trying to say is that I have been constant. And that is more than money, mm. more than position, more than influence, more than power. You still identified me as a farmer to come and address the whole world on this platform. 
what can I have better than yeah, that? Yeah, but farmers make a lot of money as no, well. Not in Nigeria. We <laughs> always lose. But, but can I ask Elsewhere, you yes. Right. right, okay. Well, so, it's building up so in Nigeria. That is, that is my reward that I'm being recognized by world acclaimed journalists like you. But I mean, and each time, either BBC or, or, or CNN or, 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 or Al Jazeera or, or TRT Ar Arise News. or Arise News wants to get somebody that will address the issue as it is. Okay, they look for Buba Galadima. Absolutely. It's better than any name. All those that we started politics in, is with in 1978 are no more on the horizon. What else would I look for? It is, this is good enough to make any sacrifice. And, and, the and whole uh, let me tell you, right. which you may not know, I don't go to supermarket or shops to pick even a soap until 2, 3 a.m. You know why? If I go there 10 times, eight, nine times, there would be somebody there to say he would want to foot my bill. Mm. I go to a filling station. There might be somebody there after taking fuel. Say, please, allow him go. Put it on my bill. What else do I need? What mm. do I need this money for? Isn't it to service myself? Some people will drop a bag of rice. Uh, already, there are a few people dropping ram. I don't need to go and buy ram for 200,000 naira. Mm. So, well, you're lucky. Life, Nobody drops rams for life me. Life is about sorting out your problems to the best of your ability. And it Not is, riches. Right. But you made a very crucial point about principles. So let's talk about principles and the way that they manifest themselves in Nigeria today. Are you supporting the principle of a southern candidate at this time of disunity in Nigeria? Why not? If we have a good person, why not? You just don't throw presidency to, to the winds, but you look at issue, you look at the person. We have a job to be done. Yeah, but the principle I am, of I, a southern I, I candidate. I say I have accepted that by saying yes. Okay, so you accept the principle of Principles, a southern candidate. Principles, why not? Right. Why not? Because I, I presume that all of us within the geographical location of this country mm. are called the Nigerians. And all of us, according to the Constitution, is eligible to become the president of Nigeria. But the but is that we, we have a job to be done. Mm. We should look for who can do that job Absolutely. for all of us. Mm. That is the underlining principles mm. that I support. And I am looking, for example, during June 12, I was interviewed for one and a half hours by a sister television station called Kaftan TV. When they were capturing people from all the states of the Federation, and I almost shed tears, almost shed tears for this country. Because We've got this government and it is principal actors on the run. Then suddenly, some people started using words that were uncomplimentary on a whole region, on a whole tribe, on a whole religion. And uh, I said then that if there was an election to be held that hour, Buhari could have won. Why? Because suddenly, suddenly, some people made him a hero, which he is not, which he is not. Well, we're going to come to talk about your relationship with Mr. It's not Bahari. a relationship. No, this I know, but, but I mean, we will get to the that. The issue of our country. I understand that. Thank you. And that's what, as you say, that's what you say drives you. So let's talk about other issues Thank around you. the country. The National Assembly, for example, has been forced to suspend media laws after enormous pressure from the press and, uh, and the public. Under President Buhari, there have been more complaints of intimidation from traditional mainstream journalists and social media, which is also facing new curbs. Is it your sense that freedom of expression is under threat in Nigeria? 
Well, you know, I'm not the best person to say that. Do you know why? At least I'm selfish. That me, I'm allowed to say what I need to say. And it is, it is, it is, it is surprising. It is surprising. And a lot of people tell me to my face that why is it that this government has not yet harassed you or eliminated you? Well, you've been arrested several times. Not by them. Yeah, but once they you, tried to. No, I understand. W weren't you arrested after the um, 2019 election? Yes, now not arrested. I was harassed and intimidated and picked raised to a hiding. I don't want to go into the details of what right. had happened. I said so severally here. So, but the truth of the matter is that government has no business in regulating the media, provided the media speaks rights and propagates the truth, they should be allowed to dig into any level, have access to any information, because that is guaranteed by our laws and guaranteed by the sovereign constitution of the country. And what bothers me most is that members of the National Assembly do forget things so fast. I have learned something. That is to say, when you are making law, because I attended the 1987 Constitutional Constituent Assembly, 94 Constitutional Conference, 2014 National uh, Conference by Jonathan. And each constitution we try to map, I am a forefront runner in all these assemblies. I do, I do propagate for things as if they will directly affect me when I am on the other side. So I don't look at my privileges of today mm. and think I am loading it on the other person because we can switch Absolutely. sides. And this is what the National Assembly does not do. For example, Loretta on, on, on not, Onoche. Onoche was proposed by a member of the National Assembly. Briefly, because we've got 30, 20 seconds before we take a break. Nominated by her because he wants her to help her, to help him achieve his ambition as a governor of a certain state. It will be shameful for this government to put forward the name of such a woman. Well, they rejected is, her. They, 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 for what reason? The, they the rejected Senate. her, they said, for federal character because there was already another person right. well, there's serving. Gonna, there's gonna Meaning be a that reason, when she is brought back, when that man is gone, she can be approved. Okay, I'll but, tell you what, we, we have to take another break. I really apologize, but what you're saying is fascinating. You're watching the Arise interview, plenty more still ahead, as we continue our chat with the maverick Nigerian politician, Buba Galadima, about a host of issues confronting Nigeria. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Arise interview, where we speak to the newsmakers as well as ordinary people doing extraordinary things around the world and featuring the voices at the heart of the stories. I'm Charles Anyagolu. Now, my guest today is Buba Galadima, former spokesman of the Buhari campaign organization as well as the Atiku campaign organization. He's been in top positions in all the main political parties since 1999 and even before, starting with the All Nigeria People's Party or ANPP. He went on to become General Buhari's National Campaign Secretary and subsequently a member of the board of Mr. Buhari's Congress for Progressive Change Party and later still the party's National Secretary. The CPC eventually merged with three other parties to form the APC with Buhari as its winning presidential candidate in 2015. Two years later, Mr. Galadima decamped to the PDP, the party that had been ousted from power by the APC, becoming one of the PDP's prominent spokespersons. He caused controversy in 2019 by announcing that the PDP candidate, Atiku Abubakar, had won the presidential election, even though the results were still being collated by the Electoral Commission. The APC called for his arrest, and he was subsequently picked up by security operatives, but was released soon after. Or perhaps he wasn't caught at all, as he himself has said. 
what an extraordinary roller coaster political career. And Buba Galadima is still with me in the studio. Thank you very much indeed for Thank staying you, with Charles. us. And you were completing the only, your thoughts. The only, the, only, the only mistake you made was that. What was that? I was at a current decimal since. 1978 as a member yeah, of the National before. Party of Nigeria. That's why I said before. Its youth leader. Yeah. Member of its National Executive Committee. <laughs> member of its National Working Committee. So it is not today, sir. Yeah, no, I know. But that's why I said that it started, I mean, you came to real prominence in, from 1999, but even before that, you were already in politics. Thank but you, let, let's, um, let's move on so we don't get bogged down with this. I mean, you were talking about Loretta Onochi or whatever, but let's move on from there. What do you think the problem is in Nigeria today? Is it that the style of governing is out of touch and is not fit to take this country forward, as, as some have suggested, or is it something else? Very simple. Incompetence, lack of justice, lack of fairness that led us to insecurity across the country. And of course, the government had not been prepared no blueprint, no program on how to run a multi-tribal, religious, meaning plural society like Nigeria. And uh, when we are incubating leaders, we must look for those with this kind of traits of unifying our country with the vision to where we should take our country. I was just reading before here of Lee Kuan Yew of Singapore and Mahathir Mohammed of Malaysia. Mm. These are our junior brothers in freedom. Yet their countries are first world countries today. But I'm curious about what you're saying because, I mean, you were there with uh, Mohamedou Buhari for many years. I mean, you must have known. I mean, you're, you're, you're on the other side now and you level criticisms against him. You say he's not, you know, he, he shouldn't be the president and so on and so forth. But you, you were there with him for many years. Didn't you see the sort of person that he is as you evolved politically along with him? Of course we did. Of course we did. But where are the think tank that were with him for 14 years? Our leader, al Haji Sile Ahama, is the most intelligent, outstanding Nigeria that I had worked with. I, a lot of people said I wasn't invited into government because I spoke against the president. Did Silehama speak against the president? You, do you know, if, even know him? Well, what I'm wondering, because you're not really answering my question. I am answering your question. Right. Because when the president came to power, he threw away the, wo the, the baby and the bath water. The programs we developed in the 14 years that we were in trenches with him to take Nigeria into a next level or a higher level, we were all thrown out. Right. And but he brought in people who knew nothing about how he became politician. So definitely, he would be at a loss in the wilderness. And we have accused the PDP severally. If you go to my archives, of how I, 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 I took on PDP during Obasanjo, Eradua, yes, I saw some and of Jonathan. Yes. I would be ashamed to listen to some of them. And that I'm still at the other, at the, at the, at the, at the, at the, at the, at the other side is because that time we developed a blueprint of how to take Nigeria forward on how to unite the Nigerian people and how to do this. Now, all of us were thrown out. And those we called bad people, rogues, thieves in the PDP, were now brought in to take, to take over the government. So how could you expect a change? 
Right. So, so it's not that you failed to detect that he has, and, and, and this is simply quoting you, I mean, this is not quoting me, but it's not that you failed to detect that he has, according to your assessment, the capacity to do that. Because one would think that if you've been with someone for so long, you would know what capacity that person has, we, we, that he has the capacity to get rid of you and move, in other words, take advantage of you is what you're saying, and then move on from there. You didn't detect that. Charles, I must confess mm. that whenever you invite me to speak, you presume within you that I could deliver. Within you. Yes. That well, I could deliver. Deliver in the sense that you, you, would, you would put forward an intelligible, you know, form of communication. Thank that you very much. would be able to Thank, learn something. Uh, that I attempt to do. Right. I attempt to do. It was correct. But we erroneously believed that when, it, when we form government, we will be key actors that will direct the path forward. And uh, we didn't know that he is only waiting for time to throw us out when he got the kind of people that he wanted. Because there is an issue that a lot of people don't understand. Anybody who is a military man has a, a kind of thinking different from you and me. If I'm your senior in the military, I will call you, Charles, you come and salute. Yes, sir. You see that fire? You, said, you say, yes, sir. Go and fall inside and die. <laughs> You are expected to and salute. And I would say, no, sir. No. You are expected to salute and go and fall and die. Or I can simply interpret it to mean that there are opponents on the other side of the mountain. I ask you, Charles, as my junior commander, go and take over that mountain. You can't say no. Mm. That is treason. That is how soldiers behave. And it is a lesson we are seeing from these generals that have ruled us, that these are the kind of people when we invite any military man to lead, that is their main thing. So you've learned But your for lesson. us politicians, we expect that everything should be placed on the table. We discuss, disagree, to agree. Once there is a majority decision, we are all satisfied that we are carried along. We will go and perform. But to them, once in the course of your relationship, you ever say no to an idea, however bad it is, that is brought by them. They keep it. There will be a time for revenge. And that is exactly what had happened. Because I can't see General Buhari thinking to run a perfect government without the services of Al-Haji Sule Yahya Hamma who had been and our course, director general. Right. And of course, for, Buba Galadima. No, forget about Buba Gal Galadima. Right. It's not my province to look for public positions. I have never asked for public for appointment in my life. Never. If there is, let anybody in Nigeria raise his finger. But that guy, he was secretary to the government of uh, Abu Bakarimi, 1979 to 1983. He was a butcher's political advisor, ran almost single-handedly. Only him and Professor Sam Aluko ran the government of General Abacha for four years. And barrel of crude oil was selling for nine dollars. Nine dollars exchange rate during General Abacha was eighty-four for four years. They ran the country. Whether you like Abacha or you don't like him. He is better than most of the subsequent guys. Well, some people would dispute that. It's their opinion. This, we are, we are in, well, we are, we are, we are in yes. democracy. Mm. But this is my view. So, if you have someone with such a record, with the knowledge of Nigeria, that has held Nigeria like this for all of us, 
it would be wrong for you to throw him right. out. Right. So given, given all these um, military rulers that you've talked about, militaristic civilians that you've talked about, some who've, you know, switched from being military men to civilian, you know, so-called Democrats, <laughs> how optimistic are you about Nigeria's future? Well, it is not for me. It is for all of us. Mm, but I'm asking you. I'm coming. Of course. Sure. I, will I, I can't do it alone. I can only speak. I can only mobilize the people. Mm. I can only educate the people. It is left for all of us to now sit down. Whether we want to build a nation or not. Okay, let me, let me put it this way. For most people in Nigeria, life is a daily struggle. That's a fact. Given that, what do you see as the prospects for better days in Nigeria? There are a lot of prospects. That is why in the beginning, mm. I made one statement which didn't tick or click in your head. That our major issue is not to look for an Igbo man, a Hausa man, Fulani man, Yoruba man, Kanuri man, Thief man, or whosoever. Our problem should be who is it that can do this job? Yes, but that's that's uh, in the wider sense. It's not I, wide. In a very particular, it is narrow. No, no, no. It in, is now in narrowing a, down. No, in a wider, that's a wider sense because that's the principle. That's the overarching principle that any country should aspire towards. But in a country like Nigeria, where there have been divisions and the same arguments have been made over and over, whether it is perceived to be the turn of the north or the turn of the south. And the, in the interests of security and unity, people have always said, let the presidency rotate to the other side. Yes. That's the crucial point. That is where people like you, who are considered and respected as being very outspoken and very honest, what you say will carry a lot of weight. Where is Buhari from? Yeah, he's from the north. From the north. Mm -hmm. What's the religion? He's Muslim. You are sure? I believe so, yes. How about me? You're from the north. Uh -huh. You're from Yobe state. Uh huh. Your I pray five times a day. I I don't know. Do you? I'm just telling you. Huh? And yet I'm criticizing him. Of what benefit is his presidency to the north or to me? Well, I don't do know. you hear that daily over two hundred people are being killed in this part of the country? And that brings me to the next topic that we're going to discuss, which is security. Once we come back from this break. Brilliant talking with you. Please stay with us. You're watching the Arise interview. Plenty more still ahead as we continue our chat with the inimitable Nigerian politician, Buba Galadima. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Arise interview. I'm Charles Anyukul. Now, my guest today is Buba Galadima, a farmer, maverick politician, rebel with a cause, and prominent figure who, it is fair to say, has shifted political party alliances and allegiances many, many times, he says, because of his unbending principles. He was a leading supporter of Muhammadu Buhari in his repeated leadership challenges, helping him to eventually secure the presidency in 2015. But they subsequently fell out, and Mr. Galadima moved on to support former Vice President Atiku Abubakar in the 2019 presidential campaign, before also moving on from that. You could say that Mr. Galadima has built a reputation as a sort of consummate political survivor. And today he's helping us assess not just his life and politics, but Nigeria today with all its challenges and potential promise. And Buba Galadima is still with me in the studio. Thank you for staying with us. Let's turn to security and the onslaught of bandits, kidnappings, and general insecurity in Nigeria. Why do you think it is happening now? And why is there so much of it taking place across northern Nigeria? Uh, thank you, Charles. Uh, my heart bleeds for this country, especially the ordinary people who daily lose their lives and who are daily becoming IDPs, not only within Nigeria, but I want to assure you, outside Nigeria. And yet, nobody has the empathy to even care. The 
primary objective of any government is the security of life and property. Would you, in all honesty, say that our lives are being protected, our properties are being protected today, with the daily news that these hundreds of people are kidnapped, hundreds are killed, some reported, some unreported. Nobody reports what, what is happening in Taraba and Adamawa. It's not in the news. As if you press men don't exist there. Daily. And yet, nobody gives a damn. And we have lost opportunities. I was on a platform. I don't know if it was here. When the African strong man, General Idris Deby, died, the president of Chad, and said that our president lost an opportunity. Yeah, you were on another channel. I saw that. To attend the funeral mm -hmm. where the issue of security in the uh, Chad Basin sub-region would be discussed with the French president who was in attendance. Secondly, another golden opportunity when Abubakar Shekau was killed by a rival faction of the Boko Haram or Iswab. And I said that if there are forward-looking security people in Nigeria, that is the night we will mobilize all our soldiers to make sure that in that, in that pandemonium, mm. we root out these elements, finish them, take over the territory and hold. We just stayed mute. Now, they have reassembled, even appointed governors for regions. If I show you what is in my handset, you will pick race. And so I what, what's in your handset then? You said? What's in your handset? It, it, uh, what, uh, what the, 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 the type of gathering of over 100,000 people in the open on the territory of Nigeria. Where is this and when was this? In, in Sambisa, it, 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 last month. Right. Last month. And nobody detected as if we have no intelligence. Now, I was on record even here to say that we can never sort out our insecurity problem mm. if we don't do two, three things. What are those two things or three things? We must use technology. Technology and intelligence to fight this war. It's not brute force. Mm. I have seen them, the, 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 the ISWAP, with armored cars they retrieved from the Nigerian army, the latest that were imported is, is here on my handset. How do you defeat such people? Okay, we've got about five minutes um, before we have to end the chat. So I want to get to a number of things. Just, Let okay, me finish just, your just, just, yeah. me, just, just me land. Sure. Two, that these bandits go in a convoy of two, three, four, five hundred motorcycles carrying 33 people and they traverse 30, 40 kilometers before reaching their target. And yet, we have an Air Force that does, can't detect this. And some, sometimes, they broad light. Sometimes in the night. And we claim to have a satellite in the orbit. What is that satellite doing? Hmm. Where is the satellite? Who is hiding the satellite? Of what use? <laughs> yeah. That we cannot even detect, map, and, 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 and uh, uh, do uh, uh, this thing to strike those particular locations. Well, I have to be honest. Those, are, those are legitimate security questions that you're raising. Because I'm helping them to mm. know. I'm helping them to know. I am helping them to know. Mm. And as far as our governors, as far as our governors do not allow local governments to have their funds and dispense as they wish according to the rules and the constitution of the country, we will continue to breed insecurity. 
Right. And talking about breeding insecurity, let's stay on that theme. Just elaborate for us on why you think there is growing political agitation in the Southeast and the Southwest, and now, of course, also the South-South, all of them threatening to boil over into turmoil. What's your sense of what's happening in those regions? They feel excluded, and that is a lack of communication. So it's legitimate in any polity to agitate. All that I don't want is agitation through violence. Mm. Because you have put us on stage. You may not know. When some pictures were being shown of some people being killed elsewhere, properties were being burned, some of us, not in government, tried to prevail on restive youth not to retaliate because two wrongs do not make a right. And even community leaders in those locations from this part of the country, we try to speak to them, not to grant interviews, not to send pictures that will aggravate the situation for Nigeria. And I opined, and I spoke to a lot of people, mm -hmm. you may not understand. So to agitate is legitimate. But in politics, it is a question of dialogue, give and take and communicating with each other it is not by violence because once you create violence it means you are sending the other man to also arm themselves yes okay let, let, let me ask take you us this. anywhere we, we've got a few seconds left um you've talked about a lot of very interesting things one of the key things you also talked about was the way that politics needs to change in this country and, and the way that politicians need to come out. It doesn't matter which part of the country they're in. Um, how can the very political fabric in Nigeria be changed so that this country can throw up the type of politicians who will not destroy Nigeria again and help to build it up? And we've got about a minute or so. Uh, Charles, I must confess that I'm one of those that are looking for alternatives. Strongly, too. And I've been talking to real political actors. So we can expect and something in every interesting state from of, you in 2023. In every state of the federation, when I shortlist 10 people to talk to, hoping to get three, I get eight or nine. Because everybody is disenchanted with the way PDP and APC are running this country. And they don't learn any lesson. And what are the problems of these two major parties? injustice and lack of fairness to right. themselves and to the entire country okay that um, is their problem and the second issue is that why is the governments formed under these parties well i'm afraid that that question is going to remain unanswered because we have run out of time but i want to thank you very much indeed buba galadima it's been brilliant talking with you. Thank you so much for coming in. That's it for this edition of the Arise interview. Join us again tomorrow from me and the entire team here in Abuja. Bye-bye and thank you for watching.